Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Delvidge and today I want to bring you an Overwatch thumbnail tutorial video or just a thumbnail tutorial video in general for YouTube and how to make your YouTube thumbnails a bit better and attract more viewers towards your videos. So in this video, I will be going over step by step on how I create my thumbnails and I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to more perfect your thumbnails, I should say. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a few examples of what I've created in, you know, from different games and Overwatch itself as well. I know from my main subscribers, you may not be interested in this and I completely understand. Tomorrow I will have a, another video out on actual Overwatch, so stay tuned for that and as well this weekend I will be dropping my Hanzo guide which is absolutely insane it takes a lot of editing to do what I'm doing with it but it's gonna be awesome so look forward to that but without further ado let's get into this thumbnail video okay so what you're seeing right now is going to be a thumbnail template I created for one amongst many and unfortunately um, he hasn't really replied to my Twitter quite yet I'm not sure if he will in the future but I'm gonna be using the thumbnail template that I made for him in this video as a tutorial purpose um, so either way, we'll get started right here. So the background can be any type of Overwatch game, you know, background that you want. It could be a snapshot from in-game. It could be a map background. It could be one of a hero. It could be pretty much anything you want as long as it's, you know, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio background and it isn't um, too low of a quality so that when you stretch it out, it doesn't look terrible. So what I just chose is just a basic, I believe, junk rat background and that's pretty straightforward next thing is going to be a border and this is not necessary it's again if you want it um, you can you see it looks perfectly fine without a border if you don't want it um, so I'm gonna show you how to create that so all you need is to just duplicate the background layer and uh, then once you finish that you just push or change all of these little lines here and push them in a little bit so when I finish all of that I will get back to you. Okay, so once we have all of the borders um, aligned and they're all put out a little bit from the actual box or the outside edge of the thumbnail, what we can do is we can change the layer styles now. And uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to inner glow, change it to white, and put the opacity to about 60%. Just type that in real quick. And then you go to outer glow and this should be a normal setting somewhere around here just copy the settings if you don't have these already and just change the size and uh, it will create a little bit of a border for the thumbnail so there you have it there's the border pretty simple um, you can make it as big as you want as small as you want and it looks great for any type of thumbnail you're designing all right so this next thing is going to be a hue slash saturation adjustment and to do this all you have to do is go up here to the adjustments tab and click hue and saturation and I'm not going to be doing that because I already have it and I can just show you guys the settings. So what I have is negative 15 for lightness and negative 90 for saturation. And I only do this because I have color correction, which is right above here. And as you can see, without color correction or hue saturation, it doesn't look as good. So you combine these two and it really looks awesome in my opinion. So the color correction itself is, I believe, from a pack that I got. Uh, but you can create your own color correction or you can use color correction from a pack but I can't really give you tutorials on this because I didn't make the color correction I just used it so yeah this is what it looks like and it's a nice bluish black color which is a good you know color for a background because it makes the text pop which we'll be getting onto in a second all right so now that we have the color correction and all of the basic stuff done um, I'm gonna show you guys how to use a shadow now or to create a shadow to make your text pop even more and you know just to create more uh, of a centralized theme in your thumbnail so this shadow is really s simple to make and as you can see when I click it uh, to toggle the visibility you can see that the edges of the thumbnail become lighter when it's turned off so all you have to do this is extremely simple is go to your brush tool and uh, go to a round brush which is in my brushes right here and change the size go back to your color palette go to black and then on the edges of your thumbnail just click and drag so it creates this nice little black effect on the edges and then all you have to do is change the opacity and you have a shadow really simple you can t uh, change it as much as you want and uh, that's that so that's the shadow I'm actually changing the opacity down a little bit more 
And the blue highlight is extremely simple as well. All you have to go to do is the brush and change to a blue and then just do a little zigzag and then go to your effects, go back to overlay and change the opacity. And again, you don't need the blue highlights or the shadows if you don't want them. They're just there to because I think they personally look really cool. Uh, just a nice little effect. I'm going to skip over the arrows because they're just a brush effect and not many people have brushes uh, with this kind of effect. So I'm just going to toggle them off and it looks perfectly fine without the arrows. So you don't need to worry if you don't have them. Uh, this next thing is going to be very crucial if you want to have a shadow in your thumbnail to make it pop out even more is going to be a light at the top. Now you can see if I toggle this off, there's no light anymore. There wasn't a shine at the very top of the thumbnail. Now there's a shine again. And you can see it by the very top, you can see there's a little bit of a white outline on the border and also coming down into the overwatch text. So all you have to do to make this again, extremely simple, uh, go back to your brush, go to your colors and change to white, make it a little bigger than it is right now using my bracket keys and just click. And then, there you have it. It's a simple, I don't think I toggled the opacity on this one, did I? Nope, just simple. 100% opacity and there you have your light. Extremely simple to make in any design or thumbnail and it makes it look 100 times better in my opinion. Next thing is going to be some orange splats. Now you may not see it at first but what I'm going to be doing is zooming in here and these little orange splats um, or debris when I toggle it off you'll see it and you won't. And this is again just a background effect so in order to do this you need a brush um, so I'll just do it really quick and when I finish I will get back to you. Okay so we have some orange debris in the background now and again it was super simple. All I needed was a brush that had you know debris or whatever paint splatters. It could be anything. Um, but if you're interested in getting the brushes that I have, I believe most of them are from Raided's Pack. I might leave a link in the description if I can find it somewhere. I'm not 100% sure though. Um, but yeah, so just some orange splats. Again, just a background effect. You don't need it if you don't want it. Um, but it just makes the thumbnail look a little bit better in my opinion. Next up we have the branding. And this is this little triangle with a logo in the top. Um, it was specifically made for one amongst many another Overwatch YouTuber. Um, so I chose his logo and I just planted it there, which is really simple to do. Um, all you need is to go to your custom shape tool or you can go to your polygon tool and choose three sides, which makes a triangle, obviously. Change the color to white and drag out. You have your triangle, really simple. Drag it to the corner, rotate it so that it fits in the spot. And it can be any size, any way that you want. There you have your um, triangle for the top. Now we're gonna go and get our logo, which is going to be, where are you, where are you? I can, oh, I never have, I never look at the folder. I, I always skip over it for some reason, but We'll just grab my logo real quick just to show you. Um, there's a little sneak peek for Hanzo's video <laughs> coming on the, this weekend. But anyways, going to grab my logo. And this isn't going to work out too well because my logo is a flat like 2D. So when I actually delete it from the triangle, it's just going to create an outline of it instead of actually creating what it's supposed to look like. So I wouldn't use this feature. If I were creating it for my thumbnails, I would use something else, but this is, you know, the general purpose. You just delete it from the triangle and you have your logo, or if you really want, you can leave it in there, but it's up to you. So there is the branding. Next is probably going to be the, the main reason why you clicked on this video is because of the text. Now, the text is really easy to do um, once you know what you're doing. So the font that I'm using is going to be the font for Overwatch and it's called Big Noodle Titling. Um, it's a, I believe it's a free font. You can just get it on Defont if you don't have it installed on your computer already. And I'll leave a link to Defont.net in the description below. And you can just search Big Noodle Titling and you can download it and install it very quickly. Um, so the text is going to be that. And um, what I've done is I've italicized it as well to make it look a little bit cooler. But if you really want to have a cool effect, you're going to unitalicize it. I can't speak today. I'm sorry. Um, but unitalicize the font. 
and these also these little triangles was a little design aspect I copied from the overwatch logo up here um, and to get the overwatch logo into your thumbnail I know I'm all over the place but I want to get this done as fast as possible so it's not a super long video but the overwatch logo you can just go to Google and import it into your thumbnail and it's completely easy super easy um, but yeah I just stole the triangles from it just to add a little bit more design to it and I will be adding that to this right here in a second okay move that up a little bit okay actually change that slightly because it's a little bit off there we go okay so now we have the triangles done and the text ready to go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge all of these layers oh I should also go over the gradient so the gradient that I have for the text text um, is going to be a yellow and orange gradient it sticks out really well when you're looking at a video you see yellow and orange it's something that catches your attention most of the time which is why I use it but you can use any other gradient you want you can use a yellow a purple a blue a green a red a, you know whatever you'd want but I'm going to be using this uh, font right here and it also matches the over overwatch colors pretty well um, so again, like I said before, I'm going to rasterize the text and I'm going to merge the layers so it all becomes one thing. And then after that, I'm going to be going to Control T, warp, and drag down to the very bottom. And just to keep it even, I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other side. And it creates a nice little warped effect for the text like that. And then I'm probably going to decrease the size slightly, center it using the Marque tool and the Move tool, and then clicking the two middle buttons. And then finally, to make it really stand out, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add some effects, which are going to be Drop Shadow, Inner Glow, and then I'm going to rasterize it one last time. And I'm going to be doing the same thing over again, just with the drop shadow this time, though, not with the inner glow. And there you have it. If you really want more of a shadow, all you have to do is just keep doing the same thing. Just add more drop shadow, add the size, and there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this thumbnail tutorial. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comment section below or just like the video. That really helps me understand what kind of content you guys would like. And like I said, Hanzo video or Hanzo Guide coming this weekend and another Overwatch video coming tomorrow for you guys so stay tuned for that um, but again thanks for watching guys if you learned something useful or you enjoyed this video smash that like button for me and until next time farewell